In this video, we will talk about types of ligands. We will describe pharmacological classification of drugs based on their interactions with receptors and ability to change a receptor state and cause a response or physiological effect. Many receptors or drugs can be modeled by having two conformational states that are in reversible equilibrium with one another. These two states are called the active state and the inactive state. Many drugs function as ligands or such receptors and affect the probability that the receptor exists preferentially in one conformation or the other. The pharmacologic properties of drugs are often based on their effects on the state of their receptors. The agonist, or in more precise sense, the full agonist molecule, it is a drug that increases the probability of a biological response by activating or stabilizing the receptor active state, reaching 100% of response the largest response that the tissue or cell is capable of giving. So, after full agon is binding to the receptor, we have stabilization of the receptor conformation in active state and reaching full response. And this full or maximum response also called Emax. Let me ask you one question. Did you remember what I said about constitutive activity in previous videos? I said constitutive activity means that even in the absence of ligands, some of receptors exert activity. So they become active spontaneously. This spontaneous activation called constitutive activity. In this paradigm, full agonists are able to stabilize a receptor or receptor pool in active state. So receptor bounded with drug spent more time in activated state rather than in inactive state. And after bonding with such kind of ligand, like full agonist, tissue or cell produces the largest response that is capable of giving, produces full response. The ability of a drug molecule to activate the receptor is actually graded, as we said before, rather than an all or nothing property and the receptor can be partially activated. Partial agonist is a drug that only partially activates a receptor and produces submaximal response. Partial agonists produce submaximal response as they are unable to cause full activation and they are unable to achieve full response. In other words, a partial agonist is a molecule that binds to a receptor and its active site, but produces only a partial response, even when all of the receptors are occupied or bound by the agonist. Sometimes drug that belongs to a partial agonist can be mentioned as agonist and antagonist. How do you think? Why? Because this group of medications demonstrate dual behavior at the receptor level. When partial agonist molecule or a ligand present alone, it acts as a partial agonist. That means it is able to partially activate a receptor and achieve submaximal response. In the presence of full agonist, partial agonist acts as an antagonist and prevents binding of full agonist to the receptor binding site and greater receptor activation. Wait a little bit, and we will cover this conception in next videos. Antagonist is a drug that binds to a receptor and does not activate it, but prevents the agonist from interacting with the binding site. In other words, an antagonist is a molecule that inhibits the action of an agonist but has no effect in the absence of agonist. And I would like to ask you again one reasonable question. What happens with constitutive activity of this receptor after binding with antagonist? Think a little bit. 
If your answer is nothing, then you are absolutely right again. After binding with antagonist, nothing happened with constitutive activity of the receptor. In most cases, antagonist just prevents binding of ligands or agonists uh, to receptor binding site and prevents receptor activation. This type of ligands also might be mentioned as neutral antagonist. But now let's come back to constitutive activity of receptors. Constitutive activity means that even in the absence of ligands, receptors exert activity. So in the absence of ligands, they are doing transitions between active and inactive states. Inverse agonists are drugs binding to a receptor that is active also in the absence of ligand. And inverse agonists reduce the probability of the receptor to be in its active state. And in this case, induce a pharmacological response opposite to that of an agonist. Inverse agonists stabilize the receptor at inactive state and reduce constitutive activity of this receptor. In addition to the agonist binding site, orthostatic binding site, as we mentioned before, to which competitive antagonists also bind, a receptor possess many other or so-called allosteric binding sites, through which drugs can influence a receptor function in various ways. By increasing or decreasing the affinity of agonist for agonist binding site, by modifying efficacy or by producing a response themselves. Depending on the direction of the effect, the ligands might be allosteric antagonists or allosteric facilitators of the agonist effect. On this diagram, we have summarized effects of agonist, antagonist, and allosteric modulator's actions. You can see that allosteric modulator able to modulate affinity for agonist binding, able to modulate efficacy of orthosteric agonism and able to produce even allosteric agonism.